टूडेज टॉपिक इज एज ट्रिगर्ड जे के फ्लिप फ्लॉप्स एज ट्रिगर्ड जे के फ्लिप फ्लॉप इज ए सर्किट दैट काउंट सर्किट सर्किट ऑफ एज ट्रिगर्ड जे के फ्लिप फ्लॉप इज शॉन इन फिगर ए दिस इज द सर्किट of age triggered j k flip flop for age triggering this rc circuit is used with clock signal clock signal followed this rc circuit it is used for age triggering and these are two nand gates and two or gates with inverted inputs bubbles represent inverter output q of upper or gate goes to the input of lower or gate and output q bar of lower or gate goes to input of upper or gate these both or gates have inverted inputs these two nand gates have three inputs clock signal followed by rc circuit goes to both these nand gates and one signal is j for upper nand gate and one signal is k for lower nand gate also output q bar is connected to upper nand gate and output q is connected to lower nand gate inputs so there are three inputs in each nand gate one is this clock signal followed by rc circuit for positive edge triggering this signal goes to both these nand gates inputs j for upper nand gate k for lower nand gate and output q goes to lower nand gate input and output q bar goes to upper nand gate input this is the circuit for age triggered jk flip flop circuit of age triggered jk flip flop is shown in figure a rc circuit with short time constant converts the rectangular clock pulse to narrow spikes because of the double inversion through nand gates the circuit is positive edge triggered the input gates are enabled only on the rising edge of the clock
Now here there are four conditions, one is inactive, other is reset, then set and then toggle. First we see inactive state, the J and K inputs are control inputs which determine what the circuit will do on the positive clock edge. When J and K both are low, both input gates are disabled and the circuit is inactive at all times including the rising edge of the clock. So the circuit will be inactive if both these two inputs J and K are zero. Next is reset. The circuit resets. When K is high and J is low, when J is low and K is high, J is 0, K is 1, then the circuit reset. Then upper gate is disabled, J is 0, then upper gate is disabled and when K is 0, lower gate will be disabled. So when J is 0 and K is 1, upper gate is disabled and there is no way to set the flip-flop. Flip-flop cannot be set when upper gate is disabled. When Q is high, the lower gate passes a reset trigger as soon as the positive edge arrives. Therefore, J equal to 0 and K equal to 1 means that a rising clock edge resets the flip-flop. So, when rising clock edge arrives and J is 0 and K is 1, the circuit resets, it means Q becomes 0. Reset means output Q is 0 and set means output Q is 1. So, when this circuit will reset, when output Q is 0, it is output Q is 0 or circuit is called reset, when J is 0 and K is 1. So high K will reset this circuit and output Q becomes 0. With this high K, J must be low. And the circuit will reset when this positive clock edge arrives. Next is set. To set the circuit, by set we mean that output Q is 1. So to keep the output Q as 1 or to set the circuit, we have to put J equal to 1 and K equal to 0. When J is high, J equal to 1 and K is low, K equal to 0. J is 1, K is 0, then this circuit will be set and output Q will be 1. So when J is 1 and K is 0, K is 0 means lower gate is disabled. 
and if lower gate is disabled then output q when the lower gate is disabled there is no way to reset the flop flop flip flop cannot be reset output q cannot be equal to 0 when q is high the lower gate so when j is 1 k is 0 lower gate is disabled and there is no way to reset the flip flop if q is low it mean if it is already reset then q bar is high and if q bar is high the upper gate passes a set trigger as soon as the positive edge arrives therefore j equal to 1 and k equal to 0 means that a rising clock edge sets the flip flop so remember to set the flip flop <coughs> output q is 1 when j is 1 j is 1 along with k equal to 0 will set this output q and output q becomes 1 and if it is not 1 then it is if it is 0 then when this next positive clock edge comes then it becomes 1 So, for reset, J must be low, K must be 1 and for set, J must be 1 and K must be 0. So, K equal to 1, high K is used to reset and j equal to 1 means high j is used to set and if we put j equal to 1 we have to put k equal to 0 and if we put k equal to 1 we must have j equal to 0. So, to set j must be high and to reset k must be high. j should be high to set this circuit and output q will be 1. And if it is not and if it is not 1 then this next positive clock edge will make it 1. In a similar manner, high k is used to reset, high k means k is 1 and in that condition j should be 0. High k is used to reset to produce q equal to 0 and if q is not equal to 0 that is it is 1 then on next positive clock edge it will be reset. So remember in this edge triggered JK flip flop these two conditions for sets and resets for sets J must be 1 for reset K must be 1 and if J is 1 K must be 0 
and if k is 1 then j must be 0 for set and reset. And fourth condition is called toggle. When j and k both are high, it is possible to set or reset the flip flop depending on the current state of the output. If q is high, the lower gate passes a reset trigger as soon as the positive clock edge arrives. If q is low, q bar is high, the upper gate passes a set trigger as soon as the positive clock edge arrives. Either way, q changes to the complement of the last state. Therefore, j equal to 1 and k equal to 1 means that the flip flop will toggle. By toggle, we means that it switches to opposite state. If q is 0, then it changes it to 1 and if q is 1, then it changes to 0. And this change occurs on the next positive clock edge. So, we have these four conditions. The circuit will be inactive when j and k both are low. Circuit is reset when k is 1, j is 0. Circuit is set when j is 1, k is 0. And circuit will toggle. Toggle means change it its set, change in change its state to the complements. If state output state q is 0, then it changes to 1. And if it is 1, then it changes to 0. And this change occurs on the positive clock edge. So these are the four conditions. Truth table is shown here. When clock is 0, whatever the j and k may be, output q is no change. When clock is 1, whatever the value of j and k, output q is no change. When there is a negative edge of the clock, whatever the value of j and k, output q is no change. And if j and k both are 0, then whatever the clock may be, output q is no change. This is inactive, inactive state when j is 0 and k is 0, clock whatever it may be. Now when we have this positive edge of clock, rising edge, these three conditions may happen. If j is 0, k is 1, the circuit resets, q becomes 0. If j is 1, k is 0, the circuit sets, output q become 1. So to set, j must be 1, to reset, k must be 1. And if both j and k are 1, then output q will toggle it change its state. This is the timing diagram for edge triggered JK flip flop. This is for positive edge triggered JK flip flop. When positive edge comes, 
then output q will be either set or reset according to j is 1 or k is 1. We see here initially j is 0 and k is 0 which is inactive state. and j is 0, k is 0 and let output q is 0. Then output q, then j becomes 1 and k becomes 0. Then even output q remains 0, but output q will become 1 when the next positive clock edge arrives. Output q must be 1 in this condition if j is 1 and k is 0. Output q must be set and must be equal to 1, but it will become 1, it will set when this positive clock edge arrives. And now this output q will be 1. Now j comes to 0, k is also 0, the circuit remains in active state, q is 1 then it remains 1. Now we put k equal to 1, j is 0 and k becomes 1. Then for k equal to 1 the circuit must be reset, output q must be equal to 0 but it will not go to 0 until the next positive clock edge arrives. When not next positive clock edge arrives, it goes to 0 and so on. This is the symbol for edge triggered JK flip flop. There are two inputs J and K, one clock signal, two outputs Q and Q bar. The standard symbol of the positive edge triggered JK flip flop is shown in figure E. In figure F, symbol of the positive edge triggered JK flip flop with preset and clear is shown. This is the symbol for edge triggered JK flip flop with preset and clear. In figure G symbol of the positive edge triggered JK flip flop with preset and clear is shown. In figure F, this is the circuit of positive edge triggered JK flip flop with preset and clear. And this is also a circuit of edge triggered JK flip flop with preset and clear. What is the difference between these two? In these two symbols, the difference is in clock signal. In figure F and in figure G, we see that in figure G, there is a bubble with clock signal. This bubble indicates that it is negative edge triggered JK flip flop and this is positive edge triggered JK flip flop when there is no bubble on clock CLK and preset and CL are clear.
with preset and clear bubbles are shown this represent that these will be active when these are low bubble represent active low state preset will be active when it is low and clear clr will be active when it is low this is the same in figure g so figure f is for positive edge triggered jk flip flop with preset and clear and figure g is for negative edge triggered jk flip flop with preset and clear and bubbles on preset and clear represent that these are active low these are active when these are low next is jk master slave flip flop jk master slave flip flop is another way to avoid racing without using rc circuit it is a combination of two clock latches the first is called the master and second is the slave the master is positively clocked jk flip flop while the slave is negatively clocked jk flip flop this implies that while the clock is high the master is active and the slave is inactive and while the clock is low the master is inactive and the slave is active this is the circuit having two jk flip flops not these are not edge triggered jk flip flop these are clocked latches with clock signal only not with rc circuit so these are two jk flip flops clocked flip flops first is known as master and the second is known as slave first jk flip flop which is master it is active when clock is high and the second jk flip flop which is known as slave it will be active when the clock is low the second jk flip flop that is slave here the clock signal is followed by a not get so the slave will be active when clock is low and to master the clock signal goes directly so master will be active when clock is high so clock signal goes to master directly and this clock signal goes through not gate to slave so master will be active when clock is high and slave will be active when clock is low these are two jk flip flops connected in this way this circuit is known as jk master slave flip flops one jk flip flop known as master and the second jk flip flop known as slave master is active when clock is high slave is active when clock is low now we see the condition of set let us assume low q and high q bar for an input condition of high j and low k and high clock the master goes into set state we assume 
that output q is low then q bar is high q is 0 q bar is 1 now we consider input condition high j low k and high clock if clock is high master will be active and master goes into set state because high j j is high so it master goes into set state producing high s and low r master goes into set state because j is high and we see this s signal becomes equal to 1 because this master is set it means its output which is represented by s it is 1 and r is then 0 nothing happens to q and q bar when clock is high q and q bar remains unchanged because when clock is high this slave is inactive only master is active j is 1 k is 0 makes s equal to 1 and r equal to 0 it sets the master and slave remains inactive q and q bar remains unchanged now when the clock goes low high s and low r force the slave into the set state producing a high q and low q bar so to set the final q output first the master is set while the clock is high and then the slave is set while the clock is low this action is sometimes called cocking and triggering we cock the master during the positive half cycle of the clock and then trigger the slave during the negative half cycle of the clock next condition is reset when the slave is set that is q is high q bar is low now for the input conditions of low j and high k j is 0 k is 1 k is 1 means this master jk flip flop will be reset it means the r it reset it means s equal to 0 and then r equal to 1 for positive clock edge and for this positive clock edge when s is 0 and r is 1 this slave remains inactive but when negative clock edge comes then slave becomes active and this s equal to 0 and r equal to 1 makes the output of slave q as low that is reset so to reset the final q output first the master is reset while the clock is high and then the slave is reset while the clock is low next condition is toggle if the j and k inputs both are high the master toggles once while the clock is high the slave then toggles once when the clock goes low no matter what the master does the slave copies it level clocking the jk master slave flip flop is level clocked in figure a while the clock is high any changes in j and k can affect the s and r outputs for this reason we normally keep j and k constant during the positive half cycle of the clock after the clock goes low the master becomes inactive and we can 
allow j and k to change this is the symbol of jk master slave flip flop with preset and clear the bubble on the clock input reminds us that the output changes when the clock goes low output will change when the clock goes low for positive cycle of the clock master is active and for negative cycle of the clock slave is active and when slave is active then we find the output according to so output q is obtained output q will be set or reset when the clock goes low so we put this bubble sign in the clock input truth table is shown in figure c summarizes the operation of jk master slave flip flop this is the truth table low preset and low clear means whatever the values of clock j and k q will be in race condition so we have to avoid this condition of low preset and low clear if preset is 0 and clear is 1 then it will clear when preset is 0 and clear is 1 it will set the output q to 1 because preset when preset is low it is low active preset and clear so preset will be active when it is low and this will set the output q equal to 1 these bubbles on preset and clear shows that these will be active when these are low so preset will be active when it is low when preset is 0 it will set the output q to 1 and when clear is 0 it will clear the output to 0 clear means output q is 0 and preset means output q is 1 so output q is 0 that is clear it is when clear is 0 and for preset is 0 output q is 1 that is set when preset is 1 and clear is 1 clock whatever it may be and j is 0 and k is 0 it is in active state so output q is no change now in other all other conditions preset and clear are 1 and for positive cycle of the clock these three conditions are obtained when j is 0 k is 1 it reset output q is 0 and when j is 1 k is 0 it sets output q is 1 and when both j and k are 1 1 then the circuit will toggle once 